Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review, this new Magon A2 fountain pen. This pen has been generating quite a buzz in the writing community and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it to see what all the fuss was about. The Magon A2 is a beautifully crafted fountain pen made with high quality materials and attention to detail. Its sleek and modern design is sure to catch the eye of any pen enthusiast. But what really sets this pen apart is its smooth writing experience. The nib glides effortlessly across the page, leaving behind a crisp and clean line. So if you're in the market for a new fountain pen, stick around for my in-depth review of this Magon A2. And if you believe everything I just said, well, it's bullshit. Not that the pen isn't good, it is. It's just that everything I just said was generated by ChatGPT. I, for one, am pleased that artificial intelligence has come so far as it seems there's so precious little intelligence in the world these days anyway. I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have maps, and uh, I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and I believe that they should, uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S., or, or should help South Africa, and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries so we will be able to build up our future. The good news is that the text generated by ChatGPT has been rated as good by the Hemingway editor because it scored at a grade eight level. Readability at lower grade levels is considered good writing, it seems. So let's see what makes this new Magon A2 fountain pen so beautifully crafted with high quality materials and attention to detail, shall we? Right now. <laughs> but I just received this. I do want to clear off my desk to do the unboxing. Uh, so let's see what this is. And I had no tracking on this. So this is a surprise. I've been waiting for this for a few weeks. This is a new Magon. And this is the A2. And we get the same stuff as you got with the A1, the booklet. Oh, starting to really go upscale with their booklets. And in English and Chinese. Excellent. And here it is. I don't know why I got the purple one. Maybe because I think I might pass it off to my wife after I'm done with it. We'll see. Whoops. And there it is. This is just like the A1 but it is faceted and it is plastic. And the A1, at least mine, was suspect in terms of that nib. And so I replaced mine with a genuine Pilot 18 karat gold nib. It has Moonman branding on the bottom of that nib. Yeah, Moonman, extra fine. So that will be interchangeable with my A1, which I have a genuine Pilot version. So let's do the swap around. There, we'll put the EF in the black one, and we'll put the black one in the purple one. I must say, I appreciate the lightness of this now, and those facets are very nice in the hand. Of course, a black nib that makes it interesting. So, I look forward to inking this up and giving it a try. And yes, I will use the EF nib that came with it. And see, that's not the only change they've made. That clip is different as well as the nose cone unit is different. Yeah, yeah, it looks slightly different. So we'll have to do some comparisons here and I'll compare it with a Pilot Decimo as well to see what the similarities are and the differences. So the Magon A2. I will show the parts and features of this pen, some size comparisons and measurements, and then provide a writing sample. Then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. You can see my review of the Magon A1 by clicking right up here 
but I'll give you the skinny on it. The nib was horrible and scratchy and leaked like a White House staffer. Howard Hunt. Howard, the president asked for a real son of a bitch to handle this Pentagon leak. What do you need? I replaced the nib with a genuine pilot, vanishing point 14 karat gold stub in black, and now it writes beautifully. The Magon A1 and A2 will accept pilot vanishing point nib replacements with no issues at all. They are functionally identical. And the Moonman pens come with these really cool accessories that can be used on your genuine pilot vanishing point as well. You get this empty cartridge with the, the metal cartridge sleeve. You get this little bulb syringe. And you get an empty cartridge with a stopper on it. So you can fill this up with your favorite ink and then take this with you and it's reusable. And the pen comes with a converter that's a thousand times better than the awful Pilot Con 40. But the key question here is, what is different and or better between the A1 and the A2? So let's put them side by each here and see the difference. The most obvious difference is that the A2 is a plastic pen, whereas the A1 is metal, making the A2 about 14 grams lighter than the A1. Some viewers have mentioned that this faceted plastic barreled A2 makes it very similar to some vintage capless vanishing points that Namiki Pilot made between 1970 and 1998 that had faceted plastic bodies. But apart from the faceted plastic body, the nose cone and the clip are quite a bit different uh, between the A1 and the A2. In fact, the A2 is closer in resemblance to the Pilot Decimo than to the Pilot Vanishing Point. The A2 is slimmer than the A1 as well and much closer to the slimmer Pilot Decimo. And both have clips without the pinch in them that both the A1 and the Pilot Vanishing Point have to accommodate your fingers. These pens are slimmer so that pinch isn't necessary. Here are the three of them in my hands as best I can hold them. The Magon A1 on the bottom the A2 in the middle, and the Pilot Decimo on the top. You notice that the A1, which is almost identical in size to the Pilot Vanishing Point capless, is bigger than both the A2 and the Decimo, which are very similar in size to each other. From the top, we see the gate where the retractable nib comes out, and that mechanism isn't nearly as smooth as either the Pilot or the A1. There's a noticeable hitch right there in the travel of the knock. And that has nothing to do with the nib inside as it does the same thing with the pilot nib unit installed. It has a nice positive click though. The chrome nose cone tapers up and holds the chrome clip that is nicely springy and usable. It's a lot less stiff than the A1. Of course, the A1 comes in a clipless version as well. So far, I haven't seen an A2 in a clipless version. And then there's the 18 facet plastic front section of the pen. That's called an octodecagon, by the way. Well, there goes my grade eight reading level rating. The good news is that unless Caveco grows 10 more facets on the Caveco sports cap, Magon won't be having to change their name anytime soon. And the back of the top part of the pen has Moonman silk screened in white paint on the back. So it seems Moonman hasn't dropped Moonman after all. The front part of the pen tapers up to a chrome ring that separates the front from the back. It looks like that ring should be the ends of both the cap and the barrel. And yet when you unscrew it, you see that it is a double ring attached to the front part where there's nothing on the edge of the barrel, but plastic. That's very strange. It must be cheaper to make it that way. But both the A1 and the Decimo split that ring in half, giving reinforcement to both the front and the back ends. The barrel then tapers away to the chrome knock. There is no bevel on the end of the back section of the pen as there is on the Decimo and the A1. The body unscrews from the top part of the pen to get at the nib unit and the supplied cartridge converter. The converter and the supplied empty cartridges and cartridge cover are completely compatible with their pilot counterparts. When you use the cartridge, you use the chromed metal cover to ensure the precise length the knock has to travel to fully extend and retract the nib unit. Without it, the knock is pressing against soft plastic. And this converter is, as I mentioned earlier, much, much better than the one supplied with either the Pilot Decimo or the Vanishing Point. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It has Moonman and EF engraved or stamped into it. 
and there's the plastic feed. Unfortunately, extra fine is the only size nib you can get currently for the A1 or the A2. To get other nib options, you'll have to purchase a Pilot. I bought this pen on AliExpress from the Lustfer store for $30.39 US, but it's now selling for $26.59 US. The price of early adoption, I guess. I mentioned that it's only available with an extra fine nib, but it is available in eight colors and your choice of chrome or black trim. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Majon A2 retractable fountain pen with a Majon A1 in black, a Pilot Decimo in red, a fake Lamy Dialog 3 in white, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted or extended. And here they are posted and or extended. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Magon A2. And it has an extra fine steel nib. Let's check the wetness. It's not too bad for an extra fine nib. It seems to flow okay. What did surprise me was how smooth this is. Because the first one I tried, the A1 nib, the extra fine, was very scratchy indeed. This one's very nice. And the ink today is Dimene Deck the Halls. From Diamine Spring Collection. So, some nice, generous flow. As extra fine nibs go, this one, they don't talk and write at the same time, Doug. As extra fine nibs go, this one isn't too bad at all. As to line variation, there's none to be had. This is very stiff and uniform. And the line this nib makes is a 0 0.4 millimeters, which makes it a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine on my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing. Very dry and very scratchy, but very thin. And some quick writing. Yeah, it doesn't have any difficulty keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I like the fact that it's much lighter than the A1, about 14 grams to be exact. I like that it is slimmer than the A1 as well. And these 18 facets feel really nice in the hand, as well as giving it a nice sparkle. I like the color options you can get with the A2, and of course the price isn't too bad either. But there are things I don't like so much. I don't like the way the pen extends. There's a bit of a hinky hitch in there. Yeah, and hinky is a technical term. What is that thing you're doing? It's technical. It's one of our little toys. It doesn't travel as smoothly as either the A1 or the Decimo does. And I don't like the fact that there's only one choice of nib, extra fine. At least this one doesn't leak like an excited dog. Oh God, the dog went on the picnic basket. <laughs> and it's very smooth and relatively wet on the page, but it's way too fine for my taste. Others might like it just fine, pardon the pun. <laughs> Forgive the pun. <laughs> what pun? Shut up, he thinks he's witty. The only option if you want more nib width choices is to buy a genuine pilot nib unit, which makes this pen cost about 120 bucks. But that's still $40 less than a decimo, which is still a metal pen. But it's only two grams heavier 
than the A2. For want of 40 bucks, it might be a good idea just to get the genuine pilot rather than this Chinese knockoff. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.